A few months ago, I created a video with 15 tips that I thought everyone should know about FIFA Career Mode. If you've not seen it, you can click the card at the top right of the video right now, and I've put it in the end screen at the end of this video. But today, I've got another bunch of tips, I think there's actually a lot more than 15 in here, that I think everybody should know about FIFA Career Mode. I've split them up into different sections based on what part of the game mode they're used for, but let's get started with the first section, which is going to be all about sharp fitness, fitness and morale. It doesn't sound super interesting, but this is actually one of the most important parts of the game. Sharpness boosts player performances, it increases the responsiveness in matches, and it makes them all around perform better. It's super noticeable when you're dribbling and passing, especially when you're through one-on-one. -on -one. If you shoot with a high sharpness player, most of the time it's going to go in. Just before every single match, make sure you've got your best players being trained so that they're all gaining sharpness and a little bit of fitness. Because Training can also recover players' stamina. Recover gives the most stamina back per training session, but it does lower sharpness a tiny bit. I use rest a lot of the time because it doesn't quite lower the stamina as much, and really, it's up to you which one you value the most. Morale, however, is one of the most hidden but most important parts in career mode. It's boosted by good performances, it's boosted by press conferences, and it's boosted by new contracts. And it makes the players play way better in games as players develop faster in training. So making sure the morale of your players is really, really high is one of the easiest ways to improve your players and your team on FIFA career mode. But how exactly can you increase your morale? Well, the easiest way to increase your morale is via press conferences. Press conferences can be a little bit boring. It's only three questions every every time, you know which hey, ones you're going to be pressing most of the time as well before you've now. even read the question. So you make sure you do them for at least the big matches, and if you're on a losing streak, you should make sure you're doing them as frequently as possible, because that becomes even more important in that situation. Morale impacts players' performances, but it also improves how fast they would develop. Players do actually have slightly different reactions to what you say in these press conferences, so it can be a useful way to get to know your squad's personality. A lot of the time they're very similar, a player will always react well to being praised for example, but sometimes they can actually improve their morale even more if you criticise them. So if you know which players are doing what, that can be a super fun and realistic way of increasing your players' okay, morale. Guys, I'm gonna wrap this up now. If you, you want to find some new players to try and make your team even better that way, then you should know a few things about scouting. Every scout is slightly different. If you'd rather have really accurate reports, you should go and focus on the judgment stats. Whereas if you'd rather just get loads of players to look for, have a look at the experience stat with your scouts. It's super important to fully scout your players before trying to sign them. You'll get to know their transfer demands, you'll see if they fit into your team with their sort of ethos, how they play and what their stats are, and you'll also get to see a little bit of their hidden information. This can be things like if they're potential to be special, you can see their wage demands, you can see how much they'll cost you of transfer budget. This is all super important information that you can only acquire in this way. So if you're finding new players and wanting to improve your squad, make sure you've got the right kind of scouts looking at the right kind of players. Another area you'll be doing a lot of scouting in your FIFA career mode save is the Youth Academy. Players will develop faster from training plans while they're in the Youth Academy, so it's super important to make sure your players are in the right squad. Once promoted, they would actually improve faster if you're training them and also playing them in matches, but game time plus senior training isn't actually that much better than them just having the youth training. So in short, don't promote too many players or have too many players promoted too soon, or you'll end up with a bunch of 70 rated 23 year old nobodies that will never be good enough for elite football. To try and explain what I just mean by saying this, if you've got an 18 year old striker already starting in your team, but you've got a 17 year old in your youth academy, you shouldn't promote them unless you have a two striker formation where you can actually play both of them and you can actually get them both training every single week. The other one, the 17 year old, will actually improve faster if you just leave them in the youth academy. While you're training your squads, you should know that players that have been put on any kind of development plan will actually develop way faster than players that you leave unbalanced. You can basically fully remove any player's flaw within one or two seasons. Even if a player or you've got your striker with 70 pace, you can probably get up to 80 to 85 by the end of your second season. 
This means stats will increase by about 4 to 5 per season if you leave a player unbalanced and they still have some potential to improve. But if you have someone on a focused development plan, for example inverted winger or a deep lying forward, they can improve nearly 10 in some of those areas. So if you're trying to make a player really fast, or you're trying to get your fullbacks crossing to go through the roof, I can't stress how important it is to have them on a focused development plan. If you're doing everything that I've mentioned in this video so far, you've probably got a squad that's full of really good players. In fact, you might have too many. So if you're trying to get rid of players and you want to make a little bit extra cash, why not consider adding your best players to the loan list? You might be wondering why would you do this when you can just transfer list them, but the loan list is actually really powerful for moving players on, even if they're someone super senior. If you don't want a player, you can receive about 5 loan to buy offers per transfer window, compared to if you're transfer listing a player, you might only get 1 or 2 offers. And these will usually be for less money than a loan to buy offer. Transfer listing is still good, so don't be afraid to prune your squad if you're noticing you're not using a specific player, but I think using loan to buy sales is actually a more effective way of getting players out of your squad. Finally, the last thing we're going to talk about is keeping the game fun. If you think your league is underperforming in Europe or maybe becoming a bit too easy for you in the league, you can always use swap deals to make the other teams better. This works better if you send good young players to other teams. We all have youth academies that are full of 90 potential players, so why not offload one or two of them to some of the smaller teams in the leagues that they have a nice golden generation come through too. The players won't instantly improve the squads, of course as the players get better, the other teams, the AI teams can either sell them for big money or they just keep them and they'll have a really good player and improve their squad, but this is a super fun way of keeping the game a little bit more challenging. Adding storylines, moving the club you're at or adding restrictions are all super easy ways to make the game more fun. Any kind of randomness to a save can make it more unpredictable. Try to think of some fun rules you can use before you start your save. For example, you could be playing as a team from a capital city. You could only then sign players from that capital city or maybe that entire country. So for example, you could have Hertha Berlin where you only sign Berliners. You could have Sutton United in League 2 where you only sign people from London. You could have Paris FC in France where you only sign Parisians. Some other good examples could be going youth academy only with a team that's famous for their young players. For example, Crew Alexandra in England have had a really good academy for a club of their size. As has La Havre in France and Las Palmas in Spain. They're all super cool options and almost every single league on FIFA has at least one club like this. Some other examples could be rebuilding a team with a full squad in one new transfer window. That's really difficult, it's going to give you a bunch of new players and you can build a squad exactly how you like it. Even if you do something like a transfer takeover, try and build an entire Newcastle United squad with £250 million. Sounds fun, it sounds easy, but I promise you it will be a super fun and actually a lot more challenging career mode save than you might imagine. If you've got any tips you think people should know, leave them in the comments below and hopefully you enjoyed some of these tips. Thank you all for watching, I'll see you soon for another video, subscribe so you don't miss any more FIFA 23 content, thank you and goodbye.